Okay, so everything we just talked about from active framework improvements, containerization, CI and CD, I mean, I hope it's clear, this is bigger than just a bunch of new features. These are really examples of how we're seeking to empower our user and our communities. Uh, and, and a big part of this includes incentivizing, rewarding, and recognizing excellence. So to that end, I want to take this opportunity to mention some important changes we're making to our certification program. So as of today, any certified LabVIEW architect or test stand, uh, sorry, any certified developer architect in LabVIEW or test stand whose certification has lapsed since 2020 can actually use the recertification point system to reactivate their certification. I challenge you to say the word certification that many times in a row. We are also doubling the point value of contributing to user groups, either as a presenter or an organizer. And we will be announcing points for contributing to open source initiatives like the ones we just talked about. Our goal here is to make it easier to uh, increase community engagement and to make it easier to get and stay certified. OK, so on the other end of the spectrum from architects are, of course, students. And as I teased earlier, we recognize the importance of working with leading universities, and especially students, to ensure they're ready for jobs in industry, many of the jobs that you in this room are probably hiring for now. So let's talk about what we're doing for academia. Last year, you may remember, we announced that LabVIEW Community Edition was now free for all students. Well, another piece of feedback was that a lot of students like and prefer Apple computers. So any fellow Apple fans in the room? As you may have caught yesterday, we're excited to announce that LabVIEW for Mac is officially back. So we're also excited to launch our latest academic hardware product, the Analog Discovery Studio Max. So this has been built from the ground up to enable hands-on learning, iterative prototyping, rapid iteration, and of course, to do all of this with LabVIEW. If you haven't already, you should check it out on the expo floor. Now, our focus in academia is really aimed at ensuring that the next generation of engineers are prepared for industry with more than just theory and math. We're big believers in hands-on learning. Right? That's what we do. We interface with the physical world. And so we've launched a renewed focus on workshops all around the world to give students hands-on experience with measurements and with LabVIEW. So to explain more, please join me in welcoming a student who is in one of those workshops. He's a sophomore in electrical and computer engineering at the University of Texas in our hometown of Austin, and also a leader in the Texas Rocket Engineering Laboratory, Noah Groff. Okay, Noah, I think what you guys are doing is so cool and so exciting, but help the audience understand more about Trell. Yeah, absolutely. So Trell is a completely student-led organization at UT Austin with over 150 members. We were first founded with the goal of becoming the first student-led university team to design, build, and launch a liquid propellant rocket to the Kármán line, but we've since expanded to work on other projects. Our main focus remains on launching the largest and most powerful collegiate bipropellant rocket ever. Ever. So to be clear, if you're picturing like a small model rocket like you might buy from a hobby store, this is not that. Noah, try to convey just how big and, and complex this rocket is. So this is a 26-foot tall rocket that is the largest and most powerful statically fired bipropellant collegiate rocket ever. It has 3,500 pounds of force at liftoff, and it's powered by a regeneratively cooled, pressure-fed Havoc engine. That is awesome. So tell us more about how Trell aims to equip students like yourselves for, for industry. So one of our main objectives is to provide students with real-world practical experience. While many of my classmates focus solely on classroom learning, we're working on something like a rocket. It offers an incredibly valuable opportunity for hands-on engineering. When you're dealing with a project that needs to meet rigorous safety standards, and rockets normally do, you quickly begin to see just how crucial testing and measurement are. Yeah, when you're putting stuff in space, suddenly you understand why test and measurement really matters. Um, and, and this is something we hear from our customers, too. They need more engineers who understand test and measurement and understand the relevant tools. So tell us how you're actually testing this rocket. So like me, most of the team is electrical or mechanical engineers. We have the team organized across several functions, including ground software, engine test, flight software, et cetera. Given the role of testing across all of these groups, we're pretty much using LabVIEW for all of our testing. One of the main things that makes it uniquely challenging 
is that Trell loses its most knowledgeable people every single year when they graduate. And as you can imagine, the software that runs this rocket is not trivial. Like your last guest, we use extensive uh, use of actor framework, and as a result, it's critical that we quickly ramp up to the next wave of students on complex software like this. Yeah, this is another challenge here with industry. They may not graduate their most senior employees every, every four years, but they need more programmers. And there's huge demand for lab programmers in particular. And this is why, again, we're, we're collaborating with universities like UT Austin to increase the pipeline of students that are ready for industry, that know what test and measurement is, and of course, know how to use LabVIEW. And we really appreciated the workshop that you and the INI team set up for us. A few of our newer members of the lab really felt empowered and excited about learning LabVIEW, and suddenly it became much easier to collect all the data we need and do extensive testing on top of that. Yeah, I was lucky to have the opportunity to help run one of those workshops. It was, it was hugely rewarding and a lot of fun seeing the students light up as they, they interacted with, with real signals and saw the power of LabVIEW. And this is a big part of our plan to organize similar workshops at universities all over the world. It's really inspiring for, for me and for us to see the next generation of engineers pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Noah, thank you and the entire Trail team for giving us a glimpse into your journey. Thank you. One final reminder to let us know if you're interested in getting involved with your local community, be it an open source project or a university near you. Thank you all. <laughs>